fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's what the happy people have to say. That's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take Par Bust and Sammy Sneed, born in old Virginia. Slam and Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, north, east, west, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. 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 With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Scheduled for a 14-hour stop in a southern Missouri town before continuing its journey, the westbound train pulled into the station at 10 minutes after 11 one night. In the sheriff's absence, Deputy Pete Salmon was waiting on the station platform to greet two Easterners on their way to San Francisco with one of the world's largest diamonds. A man named Bude Keller was with them. Bude and the deputy saw the Easterners get off the train. They hurried to meet them. I met Jackson. This man's Henry Brown. These are our credentials. Fine. I'm Deputy Sheriff Pete Sam. Yeah, hello, Pete. Howdy. This is my friend, Dude Kelly. Are you fellas policemen? We work for the company that insured the stone. Well, I have orders to cooperate with you fellas, so just tell me what you want to do. Do you have a safe in your office, Deputy Salmon? I sure do. Well, we'll keep the diamond there and stand guard till the train's ready to leave town. That suits me. Come on. I'll take you to the office. Accompanied by Dude Keller, the deputy sheriff and the two Easterners left the station and headed up the dark street toward the sheriff's office. They had only a short distance to go when Bronk and Dakota stepped in front of them. Just keep walking, gentlemen. And don't try a fast move. You're covered. Hey, uh, grab your gun. Don't you. reach for your speed. Oh, what's the idea? You're holding a gun on me. These fellas are crooks. I'm working with them. Well, you dirty double-crossing rat. I thought you were on the level. You thought wrong. Now keep quiet and keep walking to the sheriff's office as if nothing had happened. Open the door and go inside. And remember, we'll be right behind you. The first one to make a sound or try a sudden move will stop the lamp. Get going. Covered by Dude and his friends, the insurance men and Deputy Pete Salmon had no choice. The street was so nearly deserted that no one noticed them enter the sheriff's office. Within a few minutes after the diamond had been taken, the prisoners were securely tied and gagged. Then the outlaws dragged them into a cell. That's boys. I lock the cell door. We'll take the keys with us. Let's get out of here, dude. You got the diamond? Yeah, we're all set, Brunk. Come on, Dakota, out the back door. All right. The thieves traveled hard that night and most of the following morning. At noon, the sun was high, and the horses, as well as the men, were tired. Bude signaled a halt in the hills overlooking a stretch of railroad track. There's a 
spring over there with plenty of water for us and the horses. I'd like to spread my blanket on the ground and get a few hours rest. We'll all rest. We'll start traveling again when the sun goes down. That suits me. I'll take the saddles off the horses while you two break out the grub. After I eat, I'm getting some sleep. So am I. The outlaws finished a meal, then stretched blankets on the ground. Dude and Gronk were soon asleep. Dakota lay awake thinking of the Paletta Diamond and the money it would bring. Though he was out of practice, Dakota had once been an expert pickpocket. He crept to Dude's side and carefully took the leather pouch containing the diamond from the sleeping outlaw. A few minutes after Dakota left the camp, Dude wakened. As he reached for his canteen to get a drink of water, hey, he saw that the former pickpocket was gone. Frog! Frog, wake up! Oh, uh, Dakota's gone, so's the diamond. Uh, gone. Dirty double-crossing rat cleared out. He's loco to figure we let him get away. Saddle the horses while I look for tracks. We're going after him. He's it, hey, boy. Dakota had reached the railroad tracks when Dude and Bronx started downhill after him. Get up! Get up! Get up. As they sighted their double-crossing partner, the westbound train appeared in the distance. There he is, Bronx, riding along the track. I see him. Let him have it. Run. Firing from the saddle in the reckless ride downhill, neither Dude nor Bronx was able to shoot accurately. But the gunfire alerted Dakota. He spurred his horse desperately and fired over his shoulder. As the westbound roared toward him, Dude shouted... Plains between him and us. Hold your fire till it's passed. Gronk nodded and urged his horse to greater speed. Yeah, get yeah, the hell on that. By the time Dude and Bronk drew rein, the train had passed. Dakota's horse stood beside the tracks. But there was no sign of the outlaw. Where is he, Dude? Gone. Uh, his horse is all right. You figure Dakota was run over by the train? Run over nothing. He boarded it. Huh? He saw us coming after him. In open country like this, he knew he couldn't get away from us, so he took a chance on swinging aboard the train. He took a mighty big chance. The train was moving fast. Lucky he didn't break his neck. But he's about to run out of luck. Grab the reins of his horse. We'll go after him. Get up. Get up. Come on. Aboard the train, Dakota clung to the side of an empty freight car. He was trying to think of a way to reach safety when a friendly voice called, Hi there, buddy. <laughs> Help me, will you? No, take it easy. You'll be all right. Start climbing the ladder leading up here to the top of the car. The leathery-faced little man wearing tattered clothes was kneeling on top of the car. He pointed to the ladder Dakota gripped. Obediently, the outlaw started climbing. A moment later, he reached the top. Hey, good for you, partner. You made it. Uh, now where do we go? door in the side of this car is open. Getting inside will be risky. Then I better stay right here. Oh, scared, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I figured you weren't used to riding the rods when I saw you swing aboard. You did it all wrong. Well, I made it. Well, you doggone near didn't. You in trouble of some kind? What do you mean? I saw those fellas chasing you. Some of their bullets came near hitting you. You don't miss much, do you, old-timer? Uh, no. Nope. Hastings, my name. Hard luck, Hastings. I'm Dakota. Glad to know you, Dakota. But I can't say much for your luck. Huh? There's a couple of trigger-happy railroad detectives aboard this train. They've been giving me trouble since I boarded in Kansas City. Why? They're gunning for fellas like you and me. They've sworn to drive every hobo off the track. I'm no hobo. You're traveling without a ticket, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> that makes you a hobo. <laughs> Yeah, but you're better off than I am. You've got a gun. I sold mine in Kansas City for the price of a few meals. That's too bad. Oh, well, I've had hard luck all my life. I'm kind of used to it by now. But I'm hoping it'll change when I hit California. I'm going prospecting. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. 
when Bill's up fast, the kids all shout. You can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Glad of a listener and a traveling partner, Hardlock talked companionably, while Dakota considered the danger of his own position. He reloaded his gun and felt in his pocket to make sure the stolen diamond was still there. Satisfied that it was safe, he made himself as comfortable as possible. Several hours passed. Then Hardlock yelled, hey, Look out, Dakota! For what? Those railroad detectives. There they are in the roof of the car ahead. They're shooting at us. Oh, dad, rat the luck. <laughs> You want gunplay, huh? Ah, uh, you jughead, put that gun away. And stop a bullet? They're not shooting to kill. They're trying to scare us off the train. No! As hard luck shrilled a protest, a bullet from a detective's gun grazed the side of his hand. Cursing Dakota for opening fire, hard luck shouted, Jump, you mutton head, when you're still alive! <laughs> Acting on his own advice, the old man leaped from the swiftly moving train. Oh! Bullets from the detective's gun struck Dakota. The outlaw staggered, lost his precarious footing, and fell. <laughs> Years of boarding and jumping from moving trains had taught hard luck how to fall without being hurt. He hit the soft sand beside the railroad tracks and rolled down the side of a steep gully. He lay there silent and still till the train was out of sight. Then he started up the side of the gully to look for Dakota. Before he reached the top, he heard the sound of approaching hoofs. Oh. Habitually cautious, the leathery-faced old-timer drew back to the security of the gully, hoping he would not be noticed. The oncoming riders were the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend, Toto. The masked man and Indian had been only a short distance away when the train passed. Though muffled by the engine's roar and the clatter of wheels, they had heard the sound of gunshots and were hurrying to investigate. As they neared the track, Toto shouted, Hey, I hope not, Toto. Come on, Bill! Get up! Out! Then they saw Dakota lying beside the railroad track. Oh, 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 drawing their horses to sliding home. He said he'd be caught. They swung from the saddle. And him hurt plenty bad, Kimo Sabi? Yes. Wounded twice. Arm, leg broken, sir. He's dead, Toto. Not bad. I'll see if he's carrying any identification. As the masked man looked through Dakota's pockets, hard luck looked over the top of the gully. He saw the Lone Ranger's mask, the Indian with him, and the brace of guns they wore. Great shakes alive. Outlaws. He was about to draw back out of sight when he saw the masked man take a leather pouch from Dakota's pocket. A moment later, the rays of the setting sun glittered on the Paletta Diamond. Hard luck blinked, and Toto gasped. That diamond? The Paletta Diamond, Toto. You sure? Yes. After the robbery in Missouri last night, every lawman within reach of the telegraph was notified to be on the lookout for this stone. Me hear news of robbery and tell you about it. Me not think we find diamond. We'll take it to the sheriff in Carmel Creek. Uh, what about body? We'll wrap it in a blanket and take it to town. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode away. As the sound of hoofbeats receded in the distance, hard luck climbed out of the gully. He mopped his forehead with a dirty bandana and sat down to make plans. Yeah, I reckon I'd better start walking to town. Ugh. 
The old man sighed heavily and shaded his eyes to study the sun. In another half hour or so, the sun will be down. It'll be cooler walking then. Deciding to wait a while before starting for town, Hard Luck went back to the gully. Sliding to the bottom, he rested his back against the side of the gully, out of reach of the sun's rays. A moment later, the penniless old-timer was fast asleep. Half an hour later, Hard Luck was wakened when two riders drew rain a short distance from his hiding place. Might be more owls. The men who dismounted beside the track were Dude and Bronk. Bronk pointed to the ground. Look, dude. Uh, someone jumped from the train and hit the ground here. Jumped or fell. Look at the blood on the ground. Must have been wounded. You think it was Dakota? Maybe. Hey, look. Here's the tracks of two riders, Bronk. Yeah. While Bronk and Dude studied the ground intently, Hard Luck recognized them as the men who had been after Dakota. He saw the riderless horse with them and a chance to make some money. He crawled out of the gully and called. You fellas looking for someone? Hey, what the... Hey, take it easy. There's no need to draw your six shooters. I'm not armed. Make sure of that, Bronk. I'll keep him covered. Right. Where'd you come from? That gully over there. Uh, he's not armed, dude. And I've got no money either. So you might as well put away your guns. What are you doing here? Well, I wouldn't be here if Dakota had an open <laughs> fire on the railroad detective. What's that? Well, it was a case of staying aboard the train and stopping lead or... Jumping to save my skin. I jumped. What do you know about Dakota? Uh, you want to know about him, huh? Yeah. We want to know all about him. Well, what do you pay me if what? I tell you what I know? Pay you? Why? Take you it easy, bro. Uh, there's no need to get riled. I'm broke and I'm afoot. Uh, for a little cash or the extra horse you've got, I'll tell you all about Dakota. It's a deal, old timer. Start talking. Uh, he jumped aboard the train to get away from you two. I warned him about the railroad detectives, and sure enough, they showed themselves. Shooting over our heads to scare us off the train. What about Dakota? Then he had a gun and started firing back at the detectives. I jumped off the train, rolled into the gully, and stayed there till I figured it was safe to come out. I saw Dakota over here near the tracks. He looked like he'd been wounded, and he wasn't moving. But before I could get a good look at him, a couple of riders headed this way. Riders? Yeah. I dropped back into the gully. Instead of riding by, they stopped, examined Dakota, and emptied his pockets. That's gone. I got a good look at that masked man and engine and the horses they rode. Masked man? That's right. They wrapped Dakota in a blanket and took him away. And they've got the diamond, too. Oh, so that's what they took from him. Did you see it? I saw the sun lighting up something shinier than anything I ever saw before. Masked man put it back into a pouch and put the pouch in his pocket. We'll go after him, Brock. Here, the tracks. We'll follow him. Well, hey, what about me? You can have Dakota's horse, uh, Teddy boy. Thanks, Jens. Thanks a lot. Get the saddle, Brock. Yeah, I'm set to travel. Well, let's go. Get yeah, it. Yeah. Come on. and Tato drew rain in the hills a short distance from the town of Carmel Creek. I'll take the body and the diamond into town, Tato. It's not dark yet, Kimasabi. Plenty people see mask. Ask question. I'll wear a pair of your buckskins and darken my face with stain. I know the sheriff, so as soon as I reach his office, I'll identify myself. Ah, me savvy. If you wait for me here, I'll join you in less than an hour. <laughs> Nearly an hour later, Dude and Bronk neared the place where Toto waited for the return of the Lone Ranger. Expecting his disguised friend to arrive, the Indian was not alarmed by the sound of approaching hoofs. But when Toto looked through the dense growth of trees and underbrush for the rider, he saw Dude and Bronk. At the sight of the Indian, they drew guns. Oh, hold it, hold it. Don't try a fast move, Mr. You're covered. Why do you draw a gun on me? We want you and your mask, pal. For what? Me not know you. You found Dakota. And the diamond he was carrying. Now, where is he? Where's the masked man? Why do you want to know? We're asking the questions. You'll answer them. I'll keep him covered, Bronk. Disarm him. Then we'll search his gear. Right. You can save yourself a lot of trouble by telling us what you did with the diamond. We'll get it anyway. Diamond, not here. As Toto spoke, Bronk approached to take his gun. Toto's hand flashed to his holster, but you'd fired. An instant before Toto's gun cleared leather. Now, that was a warning. Freeze or I'll blow your head off. You plenty fast with guns. Fast enough. Take his gun, Bronx. You better not try another fast move, engine. Cut the palaver. Take his gun. All right. 
That's better. Now then, Redskin, where's your mask, pal? Right here. Hey, what? what? At the outlaw's world. No! Ah! Silver bullet struck Jude's gun arm and smashed Bronx weapon. Oh, keep your hands high unless you want more gunplay. My arm? I'm hit, dude. It's another Redskin. You must have it. You get here just in time. I wasn't far away when I heard gunplay here, Toto. I dismounted and closed it on foot. Hey, you don't talk like an engine. I'm not. Uh, uh, this mask man you look for. What? Hey, what? I'll keep them covered, Toto, while you tie their hands. Then we'll take them to town and turn them over to the sheriff. Them come here to get oh, diamonds. I'm not surprised. Oh. Sheriff Burke showed me a telegram he received from Deputy Pete Salmon describing the thieves who stole it. The description fits these two perfectly. Who dead man you take to town? The third thief. The three of them work together. Don't take us to jail, mister. Give us a chance. We were double cross. Save your breath for the trip to town. An hour later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the thieves with Sheriff Tom Burks in the jail in Carmel Creek. As the bearded lawman turned the key in their cell door, Bronk rubbed his eyes wearily. Doggone if I can figure it out, dude. Uh, I don't savvy the setup either, Bronk. What setup don't you savvy, dude? Masked man and the redskin. We were trailing our partner when we ran into the engine. One minute we had guns on him, and the next minute his pal started shooting. Before we knew what happened, our hands were tied and we were on our way here. <laughs> well, cheer up, fellas. You're not the first crooks to find out that... Uh, Things move mighty fast when you're tangled with the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.